I'm, I'm Craig Bogart, the oldest DIRT, previous director of the UAT project. Um, I'm happy to tell you just a little bit about the, the history of the UAT project. We, we started many years ago with, um, with support from Ken Revis out of the Utah State Office of Education. Ken was uh, at a conference and met Betsy Minor Reed. Betsy was in a similar position to Ken, employed by the Colorado Department of Education. And as they talked a little bit about the solutions they were using to support students with disabilities in their states, Betsy described to Ken the SWAC project. It was S-W-A-A-C. And this was the, the project that they initiated in Colorado to apply technology to students with disabilities over there. And as Ken returned to Utah and talked with other special ed educators, um, special ed directors and folks at the state office, they agreed with him that assistive technology really did have the potential to be a benefit to students with disabilities in Utah. And so Ken organized a meeting with many special ed directors and other special ed uh, folks, invited Betsy to come over to that meeting, and it was held up in uh, Park City in 1986. And the outcome of that meeting was to proceed and get a similar project, uh, basically model what was being done by Betsy over in Colorado. Fifteen teams were organized um, from the districts around the state of Utah, and um, they determined that the best way to get those teams up to speed and trained, ready to begin doing assistive technology assessments, would be to have the folks from Utah join in the, the training that was planned over in Tamaran, Col uh, Colorado. So they they got us on the bus. I, I was fortunate enough to be a member of the team in Jordan District that was invited to go to that initial training. And uh, so we got, we got on a bus and we, they picked up people in Salt Lake, Provo, Price, and Green River, Utah, and then we, we headed on over to Tamaran, Colorado. And it was about a week of training, approximately uh, 65 people from Utah attended that training, and I think there were around 80 or 100 people from Colorado. And they put those of us from Utah in training teams so that we were mixed with some of those who had been actually conducting AT assessments over in Colorado. And that was very helpful for us to uh, network with them and kind of discuss and review challenges and success stories um, as we went through that training. But this, this is the manual that came out of that Tamaran, Colorado week of, of workshops. And uh, we had all kinds of resources on assessments, communication, motor issues, um, items that could be considered assistive technology assessment tools, and, and uh, so that, that was a great resource. And we, we used that manual in Utah for, I don't know, probably five or six years to help us know how to move forward in conducting our assessments. And the first assessment that I was involved with was during the, the 1987-88 school year. I think it was probably September or October. Our team, which was comprised of individuals from Salt Lake School District, Jordan School District, and Park City School District, met to do an assessment on a, a fourth grade student in an elementary school in Park City, Utah. And this young man had um, cerebral palsy. He was nonverbal, pretty good cognition. As a team, we had some anxiety. We were a little bit nervous, maybe a lot nervous, because this was our first 
involvement in an assessment and we wondered, hey, can, can we really help this, this young man? Um, we knew that his parents were going to be there, special ed staff from the elementary school would be there, the principal would be there, and, and so we felt a little bit of pressure to, to come up with some ideas and some solutions to support this young man. And as, as we got working and, and looking at his abilities and his limitations, there were some ideas that came together and, and seemed to really help. Um, because of his limited motor skills, he needed a large keyboard to be successful. And he needed a plastic key guard so that he could get right within the location of the keys that he wanted. And this big old unicorn keyboard with the key guard, an echo speed synthesizer, an Apple IIe computer, and Dr. Pete's talk writer software seemed to provide a pretty good solution for this young man. He was able to type on the, on the keyboard and then have voice output from the, the software. And we, we were thrilled at the end of this um, evaluation to realize that we had come up with a solution that would begin to give this young man some communication. It was, it was really empowering and rewarding to be a part of that assessment. And, and we knew from talking to our friends over in Colorado that there were, uh, you know, a lot of possibilities when it came to enabling these, these individuals who had disabilities and, and were thrilled to see this actually work. So, uh, so that, that was my first experience in an actual assessment. We continu continued doing AT assessments during the rest of that school year, and we, we had support from, from Amy Henningsen. Amy had been on the SWAC team um, over in Colorado the previous school year, and so we knew that she had some experience and, and knowledge, and, and Ken worked with Ogden City School District where Amy was employed and the actual funding and grant to purchase the initial assessment equipment was channeled through the Ogden City School District with support and leadership from Amy Henningsen and I, I just I have great respect and appreciation for Amy's leadership to get that project initially up and running here in Utah. Um, I, I became more involved. I, I was a, an original uh, member of the teams. We, we called them AAA teams at, at, at that time, and then it event, eventually involved, evolved over to the UACT or UACT uh, teams, the Utah Augmentative Alternative Assistive Communication and Technology teams. And then just uh, a year or two ago, we became you at the Utah Assistive Technology Teams. But as, as I was going to say, in, a, in 1990, the grant for the UAC, UACT project was transferred from the Ogden City School District to the Computer Center for Citizens with Disabilities, um, located in Salt Lake City, for a couple of reasons. One was the, the Computer Center was open every day from 8 to 5, and the other one was because we were more centrally located here in Salt Lake City. So uh, the grant then, then moved to uh, the computer center in Salt Lake and, and uh, we, we hope made a, a more accessible location for team members to come and get training and, and pick up the equipment that they needed. So there's, there's a little background on, on how the project started. Again, I, I, appreciate Ken Revis, Betsy Miner Reed and and Amy Henningsen and all those who had the foresight to recognize the potential that technology held. Um, so I, I hope you continue with this